Welcome everyone to the ISHEL Think Tank Talks a series on the Ashwatsav 2022. Uh, and today we are gathered here to discuss on the topic of way forward for indigenous horses in equestrian sports. On the panel today, we have Mr. Imtia Zanis, Mr. Kushu Patel, Mr. Siddharth Singh, Mr. Nihal Singh, Ms. Viniti Ghodke, Ms. Shorya Jain, Mr. Sanjay Bhai Khada, and Mr. Anrud Singh Vagela. All of us are equestrians over here, and we are gathered over here for our love of horses. But before we proceed to the panel discussion, let me just introduce you to ISHEL for the people who are new to ISHEL and joining us for the first time. So ISHEL stands for the Indigenous Sport Horse Equestrian League. And as our core objectives, we are focused group for the purpose of targeted development of indigenous horses in, uh, of India in the modern day equestrian sport. Furthermore, we want to spread awareness of indigenous sport horses of India nationally and globally, provide platform for constructive discussion and on various topics for these horses, training and knowledge sharing initiatives, as well as participate in equestrian sporting events with teams of indigenous horses. Now, out of all our objectives, the key components that we revolve around is the awareness, knowledge sharing and knowledge building. And perhaps that's one thing which is required uh, more so in a development project like ours. And also the reason for us to gather together and uh, today and uh, you know, pick our brains around the, the topic. So uh, some, some very important concepts, some very important uh, roadmaps come out of knowledge sharing. And uh, we hope that this session as part of our core intention will also be fruitful for the purpose. Now, um, as part of our project in the last one year, uh, this is some of the, these are some of the highlights that I bring to you that we have done as ISHEL. Uh, we have had a workshop uh, with Mr. Imtiaz Anis, and he traveled all the way from uh, Nargol to Seeker in Rajasthan to work with these set of indigenous horses that you see in the picture, as well as the riders who are all from the rural backdrop and would not been to the sporting scene in the cities and towns and uh, the EFI events. And they had this opportunity to work and train under uh, Mr. Anis for the first time. Then we have had uh, Bernard. Uh, Bernard, very, he's very well known uh, globally for his work as uh, in, in, in foot farriery of uh, horses. And uh, his knowledge over there is unparalleled. Um, he came to uh, our workshop and he spent time with some of our people who are from uh, the, who were from the villages and the surrounds and came to the workshop with the horses. And uh, the most important thing is uh, he did it free of cost. And uh, he has since then joined us on the project uh, as well. So, uh, you know, uh, that, that's a very important step in the things that we are doing. picture you see uh, Dr. Akriti Choksi, who traveled all the way from Mumbai in one of our workshops in Rajasthan. She's talking to people about equine dentistry, which is one of uh, the most important topics when it comes to horse health. Uh, and here you can see the people gathered around are people from the villages who have never heard about the concept of equine dentistry. And for them, it was the very first time that they were knowing that something like this actually is important and it even exists. So that's important. Here you can see I'm talking to uh, the uh, gathered folks from the village around the structure of the horse, the horse, the bone structure of the horse and you know what the right time to start a horse and the saddle um, and the various impacts that the horse movement has on its structure and other concepts. So uh, those are the kind of workshops that uh, we are more, more and more keen on and do on a regular basis with the masters. This picture, as you see, is important because this shows the 
collection of people who come to a workshop and as you can see most of these people are from the rural backdrop now why we are hopping on people from the rural backdrop is that the number the most number of horses that exist uh, the indigenous horses are with these people and that is where the knowledge and the education has to spread so that the horses are taken good care of people understand why and how they can you know bring better future for the horses that they so much love and not only have horses in their backyards doing nothing so all of that is very important for us uh, as part of ashwatsa we have done a number of conversations with eminent personalities from the equestrian domain uh, here you can see lieutenant uh, arun kumar sahani lieutenant general arun kumar sahani uh, one of our first conversations was uh, was with uh, mr antias anis Uh, we have had Mr. Sarath Mehta from the National Equine Research Center. Session with uh, Mr. Ranjit Kher, Dr. Akriti Choksi, and Mr. Anil, uh, Dr. Anil Lahane, who are involved in the artificial insemination of equine. Uh, Mr. Tejpal Daba on sport horse development. Uh, Mr. Ashtin Dodi on the fitness of the riders or equestrians uh, through yoga. uh mr bharat um godke for equine first aid uh, mr bharat godke is also the father of uh, ms viniti godke who is our secretary so it's good to have a father and daughter combination in the um uh, organization then we spoke to mr gajendra pal singh posana around the marwari horses mr pushpendra prashad pandey for the kathwa kathiawari horses Uh, we had had bernard coming over and speaking about equine foot and farriery um, you can see dr akriti choksi as i said we have had online conversations with her on the importance of equine dentistry we have had dr laura patterson speaking to us about equine genetics uh, we have had uh, an international coach karan ban speaking to us about equine personality development one of our first conversations was uh, with uh, um, ms um, Cindy Rodomsky from South Africa. This was around the sport of uh, endurance type of endurance that they do, which is more inclusive. Then we have had uh, international FEI coach Maud Scott Barnes speaking to us about the principles of correct riding, and also apart from the riders and the coaches, we have also had conversations with people like Paula De Silva, who has photographed. the marwari horses throughout her journeys in rajasthan and the love for uh, the horses or the marwari horses specifically that she has is uh, portrayed in her, her coffee table book which is also called marwari so we have had these kind of power conversations apart from that we also have put together team of young talented riders and here you can see all of them rajveer singh ishwar singh Govind Singh, Ajit Singh, Giriraj Singh, and Pranjal, who trained and put together a team for ISHEL that participated in the endurance, uh, the EFI endurance event in January earlier this year as well. So those are the kind of work that ISHEL is involved in and has done so far. And obviously, there is a lot more to be done and to be achieved uh, in times to come. um before we go into the session i'll quickly uh, run you through the structure of this session we'll have uh, 10 minutes of opening i've taken a bit more time over there we have done the opening the panel discussion will kick off just after this and will last plus minus 60 minutes may go over 60 minutes because there is no time restrictions as such it's the important thing is the discussion itself uh, then there will be an open house where people can ask questions if they have we'll have the closing uh, of the session for 5 minutes and the feedback post sessions can be emailed to us or uh, anyone can whatsapp it to me um, or from from a feedback point of view now to uh, kick off the discussion uh, and the proceedings of this panel i'll actually start with uh, mr siddharth singh uh, siddharth sir you have been an avid equestrian uh, your love for horses is well known and uh, 
the knowledge of horses flows through in your family through generations. Um, and I think that that's a very fortunate uh, you know, place to, to be in if you are a horse lover. Apart from that, you also are a breeder and uh, you have bred Marwari horses for a good number of years now. Some well-known horses have come out of your stable as well. Um, but if we speak about the structure of the horses, the, the Marwari horse, for example, is more considered on the phenotypical uh, structure, phenotypical attributes, whereby the use more is for the shows, the showing uh, where the horses is present, uh, presented for its presence. You know, it's, it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's not an equestrian sport discipline that is more prevalent on these horses. Uh, so there's one thing of having a structure that is uh, conducive to showing of the horses, but there's another thing of having a horse structure that is more conducive to sport. So on, uh, on that front, I would like to understand from you what according to you or what in your mind is a good structured Marwari or indigenous horse that we can use in the sporting arena. So. Three. Um, so I've been the proud owner of, of several Marwari horses. I've been committed to them. I've been involved in the promotion preservation of these horses. Um, I am into hospitality as a business. I own hotels and uh, my passion for horses and equestrian sport has been um, channelized into my hotels as well. So we offer, offer uh, equestrian programs in all my hotels where our guests can actually get to uh, ride Marwari horses. Of course, I need experience for that. Now, I have seen the new era of the Marwari. I have seen it evolve. Uh, I am part of the All India Marwari Horse Society, which is um, patronized. The patron in chief of this society is the Maharaj of Jodhpur, Gat Singh Ji. And um, as a member of the Horse Society, we have we started we started work on the Marwari in the late 90s, 1998, 1999, I think the first seminar happened. And thereafter, there's been a lot of progress that's been made uh, where first the, pheno the phenotypical characteristics of the breed were documented. And after that, breed, you know, breeders were encouraged to breed the right kind of animal, preserving the old bloodlines all that happened and then there were seminars held in Jodhpur and other places to educate breeders on equine management and the need for exercise to the young foal. All, all that was taken very well by the breeders and today after two decades, one sees a different horse. The horse itself has really come into its own. There was a degeneration that happened in this breed, especially post-independence, because it went into the wrong hands. People who did not understand equines owned the horse. And so the animals suffered as a result of it, not because they were essentially badly treated. It was just that the owners were not very savvy with management of the horse, the right kind of exercise, the right kind of feed. And so there was not enough development. Now, today we see the breeders giving paddocks to the young foals, Marwari breeders. Um, and you have the result in front of you. You have a fabulous horse that has come out. The, the, the Marwari of today has gained at least two or three inches in height from the ones that we saw in the, uh, in the 90s. And uh, of course, the, the muscle tone, the, the bone structure, all that has, uh, is far, far better than what it was. So essentially trying to get the Marwari back on track. Now, sadly, 
95% of all Marwadi owners do not ride. So they are passionate about their horse. They are looking after their animals, but the sole purpose of, of owning a Marwadi is to take him into a show in hand and showing him in, in the different classes that are there in the show. So foals, fillies, mares and stallions. And um, that is the competition. And the showing is always in hand. There are, there are, um, uh, I was, I was, I was telling you on a one-to-one -one that uh, some of these shows and the way the horses are shown is actually detrimental to the Marwari. Um, simply because there is, there are some, there are some misconceptions about head carriage, about uh, the way the horse should be standing. Um, the emphasis on head carriage has actually destroyed a few horses, um, wherein they have, they have deliberately tried mm -hmm. to put the head unnaturally higher than it should be, resulting in a hollow back, resulting in, in an eave neck and a very taut uh, musculature in the, uh, the inside of the neck resulting in, you know, the hawks trailing and uh, uh, a shortened top line. Now, ideally what you are looking at in any equine is a long top line. And only if you have that, will you be able to have a sport horse and a horse with ability. So by, by raising the neck and showing, you are, you are actually putting a lot of pressure on other you know, various joints of the horse, which, uh, which affect it. And he, he then breaks down at some point, he gets weak. Um, a hollow back would result in kissing spines and all kinds of other problems. Um, he, will have, uh, he will have problems in his hocks and hinds. And having reached this far, just in hand showing and breeding that has been successful and very successful. I think the next step for the Marwadi breeders and indigenous horse owners is equitation and the right kind of equitation. I think now there is a dire need for people to actually start riding this animal and to actually ride it in the proper way to get the maximum out of it and show him in all its beauty. He has a, it, this animal has a beautiful gait, which can be, which can be further enhanced by proper, uh, proper riding and schooling. And once that happens, then, then we will really have a horse that can actually stand up and be counted amongst um, the top old breeds of the world. I mean, I think uh, Spain is a great model to follow. The Spanish Iberian yes, horses. Sir, sir, your voice is uh, uh, breaking up, but uh, I it's get funny. the crux of what you are saying. Um, you know, you, you harped on a very important point. You know, for the shows, there's a, there has to be a particular image of that horse that has to be displayed, and because of that image uh, display requirements, uh, characteristics like you know the hollow back the e-neck, uh, you know, uh, out of proportion uh, hooves, those all come into picture, which, which is difficult for these horses. I mean, for performing in the rings is one thing, but performing in the equestrian sport field is just another. And I think more and more people, if they are focused on performing uh, uh, in, the, in the rings, that's where they bring the horses up like that. But I'll come to uh, Kushu, sir, you. Uh, from uh, taking over from uh, where the last question was, you have, uh, you know, most of the breeders or owners of these horses, as Mr. Singh said, is uh, are used in the rings. But it's you and your circle that I have seen and I have known that are using these horses on actual ground and actual footing, uh, especially in the endurance races. I mean, you, 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 you and your club are known for organizing. Uh, these events and you have done that uh, day in day out and you've actually put these horses to the you know the kind of right 
tasks on ground when it comes to sport. What have been your experience, number one, of them being on the ground? And I'll put a few questions so that you can answer, uh, uh, you can relate a few of them together. So one is that, the other is, why do we say that the indigenous sources, especially the Katiawadi and the Marwari are best for endurance? You know, are, are they best performing endurance horses? Yes or no? Can they perform endurance as other horses around the world like Arabs are performing? Uh, perhaps with nutrition and right training, yes, but do they have that in them? And from a structure point of view, when you ride them, when your group, when your people ride them, what are the kind of feedback that you have or they have for these horses, which make them either good, bad or mediocre uh, athletes to work with? Okay, thank you for the question. So I'll I like to introduce two three points of mine. So uh, I have personally owned all the breeds that uh, we talk about. I've I've had Marwari, I have Katiawari, I had Katiawari, I have a Sindhi right now. I've owned thoroughbreds also, and I've owned a warm Dutch blood for jumping also. Uh, but right now I'm I'm mostly with Marwaris. The Marwa when I say Marwaris, we are talking about the Indian breed. Nobody can actually define how much of this is a Marwari versus a Sindhi versus a Katiawari. There are there are classifications for that. We are talking about the Indian breed. I will I will concentrate on the Indian breed. First, talking about the structure and the beauty. The structure is the smaller gait, smooth gait. The legs, I find the legs are much more stronger for our terrain, especially for endurance where we've got Harder terrains. If you are doing an endurance in Balanpur or some soft area, it's different. But if you are doing endurance in a mixed area, we need stronger legs. Their capability to uh, hold on to heat, their capability to handle heat in the day when endurance go for 60 kilometers, 80 kilometers, we ride at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Their capability to handle heat, heat is also important. Uh, apart from these hand-holding horses, which are supposed to, which people are trying to make them bigger and bigger and bigger, I feel the indigenous horse, who is a much more smaller and a better breed compared to the thoroughbred, it helps them. Smaller body surface, smaller breed, smaller legs. They are being able to perform much more better for longer distances. I had uh, uh, thoroughbreds also in uh, uh, endurance. Is a friend of mine has thoroughbred in endurance, which is doing good. But overall, and these are much more hardier horses. Even if the shoe falls down, you can manage to take them for another 10-12 kilometers. Their hoofs are hardy. They are much more hardier. So they are built much more hardier. Of course, if history says right, I am not a historian, but if history says right, these are somewhere from the Arab League only. The Arab horses came here and got mixed with the indigenous and that is how these breeds came out. So there is some kind of Arab lineage in all the indigenous breeds that we are talking about. Maybe Katiawari, Sindhi. Not in the Marwari. Okay, I, I, I respect that point of view. I respect that point of view. So I feel they are much more uh, they are much more capable to do endurance for a longer distance. The other point is that I was one of the instrumental person to start an indigenous horse society in Maharashtra, Indigenous Horse Owners Association of Maharashtra, which is 90% being uh, controlled and governed by the handhold uh, owners and the show owners. But there are about 10 to 15 of us who are very, very interested in riding. We are trying to push the riding uh, fair culture in the people. We are about uh, 30 to 40 of us in Maharashtra who are very, very serious in riding and we and the only spot that we see where the Ma Ka indigenous horse can really do well is uh, the endurance. So we are, we are working towards endurance, we are working towards indigenous horse and we are trying to put all our efforts to see that this grows. What we are lacking tremendous Awareness is lacked. A lot of people have different notions of endurance. A lot of people have different wants, what they can, what they want from the animal, what they can achieve from the animal. A lot of people are thinking endurance to be an open field area where they can just gallop and run out. So a lot of awareness from this forum. If you can, if you can do more and more particular camps for training people for the endurance event. I can I can be a part of that. I've got international coaches also who, who have come twice and coached us. I've done international. Uh, there, there are, so in endurance, there are one star, two stars, three star, four star. So I've got international four star riders who come and take camps over here to create awareness. 
I think that needs to be done. It is very important that we do that. And uh, doing an EFI event in our country is becoming a very difficult and a nightmare issue because EFI itself has their own challenges and, and EFI is in their own mess. But we should locally have a lot of events. We can even have mounted sports as an event. We can even have endurance as an event. We can even have a five kilometer uh, a small endurance obstacle track as an event to push the capability of these horses. Only if we work more and more towards that, we will be able to get better, better results from these horses, which are fantastic breed, which is a fantastic breed. There is no doubt about it. Our indigenous horses are a fantastic breed. Thoroughbreds have only become more famous because the availability became more easier. And, you know, from the race course, once, they, once the three and a half, four years uh, get over, they are available at free of cost and they are available at reasonable cost. So, they are just become more, more available by ease. But otherwise, our indigenous breed is extremely capable. This is what I, I can say as far as your question. I hope I've answered your question. You, you have. And uh, uh, there's a few important takeaways from all the points that uh, you have raised. One is definitely the awareness and the handling of horses when the horses are growing up to make them in, in the frame that they can perform. And I'm not talking about uh, a handful of horses, but more and more horses, because that's where we'll get horses that can perform to choose from, you know. So that's important. Holding workshops, uh, definitely something that is uh, that is key. And not only holding workshops, but actually going to the people and holding it at their places, because it's difficult for people. Uh, and, and we're talking about more and more people and more and more masses who, who are more not in the cities as such, you know. So we are trying to get something together to form a kind of a forum like uh, Mpia sir is part of it, Dr. Akruti is part of it, uh, Bernard is part of it. More and more people like you, if you become part of it, then you know we reach, we reach out with more diverse conversations, with more diverse knowledge to you know, a diaspora of uh, people who actually need it. Uh, once the right kind of horses come up, uh, the, the learning and the structure curve, then the riders can perhaps have better mounts and perform better, which is good for not only the riders, but also for the horses themselves. So absolutely, uh, you're spotting over there. Uh, EFI events is something like I own indigenous horses and I want to participate in the EFI events with my indigenous horses. Most of my horses, apart from three of them, are in endurance. And we wait for a whole year from January to January to have that 40 kilometers and then the follow up 60 kilometers. And at times, you know, like this time, there are talks that uh, the event might not be held because of the, uh, you know, the viral infections that are spreading around. So, you know, those are the kind of challenges, you know, with one event throughout the year, if one bangs on EFI, that's absolutely not going to work for, for us. Uh, you know, when we talk about our horses. So those are the kind of challenges. And, you know, the right approach is to have club level and, you know, district correct, level, correct, or, correct. Uh, uh, provincial level kind of uh, uh, events that can give them more and more exposure. And perhaps one or two odd uh, national events with EFI because, you know, uh, I don't know, they have their internal issues, but the repercussions are felt, uh, you know, far and wide. Uh, therefore, we India, should. Sir, therefore, we I'll should. Come to you next. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Complete. Complete your sentence. No, no. Please, therefore, sir. we should. We should not not look at EFI events and do many more local events where we can get our horses and the riders ready. And then when EFI comes up, we look into it. But local events is most important. Absolutely, uh, Amitya sir. I mean, we have had uh, some insights from uh, Mr. Siddharth Singh and Mr. Kushu Patel, and i like to take the discussion further from what we have heard till now. You have uh, worked with, uh, you know, mostly the uh, thoroughbreds and the warblers and other breeds in your quest, in your equestrian career. You have also been into the race industry training thoroughbreds on the tracks. Uh, fantastic experience you have had overall. And, uh, you know, I've had that opportunity of being with you and the young riders from, uh, uh, you know, around the village and the stable, uh, where you trained uh, them for two days on the Marwari horses and the Kati that I, that I have. So I, I think perhaps 
your experience with uh, you know working with the indigenous horses uh, came to forefront in that workshop what thoughts did you take back about these horses and perhaps the capability of the riders who have not had experience or exposure in the city domain what thoughts did you take back i mean was it that this is doable or was it that you know this is this is perhaps difficult um, or perhaps you know this is something that is is not doable I, so I, I think I'm just putting uh, my words over there. No, I mean I just want to make one point very clear, and it doesn't matter. I think people are getting caught up with Marwadi, Kathiawadi, thoroughbred, warm blood. They are all horses, and the number one thing is training. And exactly how Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Rohit said it, as well as Mr. Uh, Kushru Patel, it's got nothing to do with the type of the horse. The breed. In thoroughbreds, we have 14 two hands. We have 17 hands. They're still athletic. Same with the every breed. They're all ranges there. It's all to do with training. there is no concept of training that's why even in the in the equestrian world why is everybody importing a warm blood because they can't train a thoroughbred that's the basic thing is so this cheaper buy a ready made horse otherwise the thoroughbreds can take on the warm bloods i i represented india at the olympic games on thoroughbreds so there's nothing that thoroughbred is better warm blood is better warm blood jump no thorough it's in the time of training if you put that training into marwadi horse as well of course the type of the type of horse the temperament has to work this is the same as a thoroughbred also they are good thoroughbreds and they are bad thoroughbreds the same as a warm blood also we've got 1 meter 50 jumping horses that do you know don't go past the gate they turn towards something else the bad mind is mind temperament is first over every horse right so to the level of indian level of juniors junior nationals any marwadi horse that is able to do it can jump but you all have no training concepts you all have exactly. no, no nobody is putting any training i mean nobody i i go to coimbatore and work at a school they only have uh, marwadi horses we went to a epl in bangalore all warm bloods and my kids rode marwadi horses first second because they could nobody no warm blood could make the turns that they made and at 90 cm there is no warm blood that can beat a marwadi at all if they jump correctly okay so it's all to do with in all these talks for me just like mr khushu patel said we can keep on running behind the efi it no we have to do it ourselves run our own training centers that's what mm-hmm. the warm bloods are doing right today embassy is taking over and done their own thing uh, epl modi question is doing their own everybody is doing their own thing so you all are still banking on organizations mm-hmm. associations and operations it has it's too old fashioned take it on make it move i gave my place as a venue it's a beautiful venue i've got 7 miles of beach run as many endurance events as you like free i'm not charging you i would love it but who's going to take it on we need that sort of welfare so everybody is into their own this thing if you do it in proper training centers where these horses are trained correctly with trotting poles canter pole exercises jumping grid work no but they jump 2 feet they'll make them jump 4 feet tomorrow then they break them down there's you no know, process right same with Absolutely. the gear you look at the marwadi horses i have seen so many they put the worst gear on those horses they chalega apne apne ghode pe tagda hai hum karenge nahi galat hai ghoda to ghoda hai na jo muh mein lag raha hai bit lag raha hai ekdam rusted bit in the mouth and they are showing me videos i have got people in gujarat also coming now they please help me please help me look at the tack they are using it's not expensive use correct simple clean tack so education is everything for me it let's get away from whether it's marwadi whether it's katwadi whether it's warm blood it's all to do the same that's why even thoroughbreds now they can't do because they can't train them nobody has the time in the old exactly. days we had those savads that actually went into training we used to get horses of the tri- like today i spent two years to get a horse to jump at good level but who has the time when you can go to germany and buy a ready made horse pay 40 lakhs and done my mine is a free horse so i can keep going on about this i think it's really really important that instead of having all this talk we actually set up a whole year we've got we're starting now so from january that there's so many training sessions different parts of india let the tra- let the uh, selected uh, people travel to those places and run a, so that they can spread the correct word of how to actually train these horses and it doesn't matter whether every horse is trained the same way i will not train a marwadi separate differently they still do trotting poles grid work leg yielding canter same absolutely you are spot on anish absolutely and i think uh, so i heard that uh, passion in your voice and uh, tone as well which is uh, very uh, heartwarming for me because that's how uh, we, we connected on the project as well and i think we need to give you the platform and uh, people like you the platform from the owners of the indigenous horses to actually do something with you know uh, mr siddarth uh, if if you are listening to 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 those comments 
you know that that's very important you know we 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 have the horses we own the horses but the platform or the infrastructure to get these horses through the training regime and do something that's something which is lacking that's something which is completely missing you know at, at this day and age where people are talking about uh, you know kind of having um, training Vim- infrastructure we are talking about yeah, yeah vimal ji that's what i do i i spend my time training my horses i am uh, i'm riding every day and i'm training so i i've had a conversation uh, with anis and we've talked a lot about this and somebody like anis comes um, and we have clinics with with somebody like anis it will really help a great deal um but i and think local i think shows, one, local, one shows, word, local word. shows is what is important and that is the way forward you have to have your own shows and you have to have your own uh, uh, and that, that is the encouragement to uh, local horse owners and and breeders and riders and the rules have to be the same i'll give a prime example yeah. just now jack luke get a jumping show so they had a they had a marwadi horse called prince i don't know whether you all may know of him he's one of the very good jumping horses he won the meter class he won the meter 10 class in jack luke at the next round he's doing ball and bucket then he's doing 10 pegging so this is where the education comes in while the warm blood mm. is not doing that he's joined that one one meter 10 class and gone home after that rakho me bolta this fellow if there's anything else a bachcha chal betao so that poor horse ran into nine events in over one weekend he's not going wow. to last he's not going to last yeah, exactly. and eventually when he stops let's see marwadi he doesn't have it in him yes he stops yeah, because you have not given him that opportunity that you given your warm blood education, you have saved yes. your warm blood after the jumping Absolutely. you have put multani mitti and iced him while well, you have not done that to the marwadi right he's got the same legs and tendons his tendons are not made differently <laughs> very true he is jumping true. without any boots he is jumping without any this thing the tongue was wrong the saddle was wrong everything but he's still jumping but there's no education just keep on jumping so this is where we we are lacking not yes, to do with the indeed. breed or the horse very true and i think the two words that you said was uh, that, that that i'm taking away uh, very distinctively from your uh, dialogue was training centers and i think the training centers which is like more the training and knowledge centers have to be established you know people come up with their infrastructure and offer them as training centers where the you know people from around can come and you know do the classes and do the training and all i think that's something that's very important uh, for us to progress to the next level the, the thought process the mindset everything that you have spoken about have to be trained and the knowledge has to be driven in uh, in, in 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 that domain but sir, from from your from your last workshop uh, you know specifically was there any uh, uh, any, any any takeaway that uh, uh, we should be listening to no in my last from the riders nothing. as well from the riders point of view as well you have you have worked with those people who have now been in these clubs and not yeah. been in the cities and not been in the efi domains and all right. but you worked with them you know for them it was kind of uh, um, something new and something surprising that you know these things are happening for you you were working with people who have never been through your training program so what was your kind of first impression for those people or the or those those riders who were riding those no, horses excellent i mean they all rode nice they're great horsemen there's no problem with that their balance was good they just don't have the finesse they don't understand what the outside rain is inside rain is how soft they can be for them it's all just speed you see it's not that for, for in jumping you don't use speed in long jump you use speed high jump it's you see in a athlete when he jumps high jump he only takes two and three steps while the long jump person runs 1 meter no so it's the same thing with us so that's the only thing that has to get out of their mindset you know but it's the program so they will jump one day next day they'll go for two hours hack ride so whatever you've done that day before gets lost so they have to the whole mindset has to change if you want to change this to how we got to get our horses getting better you know so that becomes a a hard one you know and also we don't need our own separate training center nobody has that kind of funding and finance it, we have to incorporate in inclusion right we are going to be competing with the thoroughbreds and warm blood so we can be we have to pinpoint places like this all over the country which are accessible which are willing to take on some of these horses where breeders can send horses where trainers can bring their horses where where riders can bring and then it, it incorporate them into the system when i'm in coimbatore and i'm giving a jumping lesson i've got a warm blood thoroughbred and marwadi in the same lesson there is no difference i am not going to treat him separately he has to still follow the same format fantastic sir uh, nihal singh ji main aap se puchunga agla sawal 
जब हम ट्रेनिंग की बात कर रहे हैं और घोड़े के माइंडसेट की बात कर रहे हैं आप मस्ताना के साथ काम कर रहे हैं और मुझे नहीं पता कि आप पहले भी देसी घोड़ों के साथ में काम किए हुए है कि नहीं बट मस्ताना के साथ में उसको ट्रेन करने के जर्नी में आपका एक्सपीरियंस क्या रहा है देसी घोड़ों के साथ में और आपको क्या लगता है कि ये घोड़े कहाँ तक क्या कर सकते हैं सबसे सबसे पहली बात तो ये है कि हमारी एक धारणा है कि मारवाड़ी घोड़ा मतलब गरम दिमाग से रहता है ऐसा कुछ नहीं मारवाड़ी घोड़े के अंदर चंचलता है गरम दिमाग नहीं है तो मस्ताना मेरे पास जब दो साल पहले आया तो कुछ नहीं जब ग्राउंड में दौड़ रहा तो दौड़ते में जो ट्रॉट में उसके जो दौड़ने का एक्सपीरियंस था तो हमने अपने दिमाग में सोचा कि यार इस, इसे अपनी मेहनत करें तो कुछ बन सकता है तो सब पहले हमने उसको एक साल लेंजिंग ट्रेवटिंग पोल पे रखा और उसके बाद में उस पर राइडिंग करना शुरू किया और राइडिंग करना शुरू किया तो आज की तारीख में बड़ी सबसे बड़ा यही है ना कि गर्म दिमाग जरूर है लेकिन ऐसा कुछ नहीं है अगर प्यार से कोई काम कराया जाए मारवाड़ी से तो ऐसा कुछ नहीं है कहते हैं कि वो तो गर्म दिमाग का होता है वो उसको ट्रेन करना मुश्किल है तो मेरे को तो सर ऐसा कुछ नहीं लगा मस्ताना को मैंने बड़े प्रेम से चलाया और आज अच्छा चल रहा है ड्रेस आज लेकिन हाँ स्टैलियन होने के साथ साथ में सर क्या है कि मारवाड़ी हो स्टैलियन हो तो उसके मैं शुरू में थोड़ा परेशान किया ले बाद में धीरे धीरे बोले कि प्यार से मतलब आहिस्ता आहिस्ता हाथ में बढ़िया फर्स्ट क्लास चल रहा है और ड्रेस आज का सर मेरे पास में मैंने मारवाड़ी घोड़े मैंने बावन साल से राइडिंग कर रहा हूँ मारवाड़ी तेरो बॉम्बलड है लेकिन ड्रेस आज के लिए मस्ताना को जो तैयार किया ये मेरा पहला घोड़ा है मतलब एक चैलेंज था ये मतलब स्टैलियन वो भी मारवाड़ी किस काम के लिए आप तैयार कर सकते हो तो मैंने सर सबसे ज्यादा जोर इस पर दिया कि मैं जो ड्रेस साज के लिए तैयार करके बताऊंगा और सर किया और चल रहा है अच्छा चल रहा है सर बहुत बढ़िया काम दे रहा है लेकिन बस मेरा तो कहना यही है कि ऐसा कुछ नहीं है कि सर मारवाड़ी घोड़ा गर्म दिमाग का है ऐसा नहीं उनके अंदर चंचलता है उससे अगर आप प्रेम से काम लोगे तो सर बहुत अच्छा काम करके देते हैं और दे रहे हैं और चल रहा है सर घोड़े मैंने बावन साल से राइडिंग कर रहा हूँ सर स्पोर्ट्स में और बावन साल से मेरे पास में बहुत से मारवाड़ी आए जंपिंग कराया ट्रेंड पैकिंग कराया लेकिन ड्रेस आज का ये पहला घोड़ा है वो भी स्टैलियन और बढ़िया चल रहा है और अच्छा एक्सपीरियंस है सबसे तो आगे चल के मैं तो इसे जम्प भी करा रहा है एक छोटा ये दस साल का बच्चा मेरा इससे जम्प करा रहा है तो उसका मतलब मैं आपसे पूछने वाला था कि पिछले पिछले साल या इसी साल शायद मार्च में या कभी आपके स्टेबल से एक यंग राइडर था जो दिल्ली हॉर्स शो में मस्ताना को ड्रसाज में राइड किया था जी अभी एक स्टैलियन है जी और एक घोड़ा है जिस जो जाना जाता है गर्म दिमाग उसके ऊपर में आपने एक यंग राइडर को डाला क्या कॉन्फिडेंस था आपके अंदर में जिस पे बेस करके आपने उस यंग राइडर को उस घोड़े पे और एक शो में ड्रसाज में उतारा मतलब जयपुर गए हुए और अपना जूनियर नेशनल भोपाल में होने वाला है और भोपाल में मैं इसको जम्पिंग और ड्रेस दोनों में उतारूंगा वो भी बच्चे चलाएंगे दस ग्यारह साल के मतलब दस ग्यारह साल का बच्चा स्टेलियन को चलाए तो सर बहुत बड़ी बात है यहाँ तक हमने लगाया और अच्छा चल रहा है और अपना दस दिसंबर से भोपाल में जूनियर नेशनल होने वाला है उसमें मेरे बच्चे चलाएंगे तो आपको क्या लगता है सर कि आपने देसी घोड़ों को ट्रेन करने के लिए जिस तरह से इम्तियाज सर ने बोला कि एक सब कुछ है घोड़े में लेकिन उसका ट्रेनिंग और उसका रख रखा वो मिसिंग है आपके क्लब में कितने देसी घोड़े हैं मस्ताना के अलावा भी आप किसी और देसी घोड़ों को ट्रेन कर रहे हैं और ज्यादा से ज्यादा देसी घोड़े ट्रेन हो उसके लिए अपने को क्या करना चाहिए मतलब ट्रेन करने के लिए सर देसी घोड़ों को ज्यादा से ज्यादा ट्रेन करने के लिए भी और राइडर्स को या जो घोड़े के ओनर्स है उनको इंकरेज करने के लिए भी क्या करना चाहिए अपने को ज्यादा से ज्यादा ट्रेन करने के लिए सर हाँ हाँ और तो प्रॉपर ट्रेनिंग के लिए जी तो उसके लिए कुछ नहीं सर मतलब ऐसा ये है कि पहले अपना मारवाड़ी के लिए हम जब ट्रेन कर तो ट्रेन करने के लिए उसको सबसे पहले तो क्या है कि उसके लेवल में सबसे पहले ये देखा जाता है कि इस किस काम में आएगा जंपिंग के काम में आएगा टेंट पैकिंग के काम में आएगा या ड्रेस के काम में आएगा जैसे अपन बच्चे को पढ़ाते हैं बच्चा पढ़ने के बाद में देखते हैं डॉक्टर बनेगा इंजीनियर बनेगा क्या बनेगा इसी हिसाब से जब घोड़े की ट्रेनिंग देते हैं हम बेसिक ट्रेनिंग और बेसिक ट्रेनिंग में देख लिया जाता है कि किस लाइन में जा सकता है 
उस लाइन से फिर उसको हम ट्रेनिंग देना शुरू पहले तो बेसिक ट्रेनिंग और बेसिक के बाद फिर देख लिया कि जंप करेगा या टेंट पैकिंग करेगा ड्रिल शायद करेगा फिर उस लाइन में ले जाते हैं सर फिर उस लाइन की ट्रेनिंग देना शुरू करने से सर मैं आपको कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट करूंगा इस बारे में कि ये जरूरी नहीं है कि मेडल्स जीता जाए या फर्स्ट सेकंड थर्ड पोजीशन में आ जाए सिर्फ ग्राउंड में उतरना और खेल को खेलना जो है अपने आप में एक जीत होती है और आप मस्ताना को जयपुर लेके गए अभी आप बोल रहे हैं भोपाल में जूनियर नेशनल्स खेलेगा वो हम सब लुक फॉरवर्ड करेंगे बिकॉज ये सिर्फ मस्ताना का बात नहीं है मस्ताना एक एग्जाम्पल सेटअप कर रहा है बाकी सब देसी घोड़ों के लिए क्या बोल रहे ये बहुत बड़ी बात है जी और हम हम लुक फॉरवर्ड करेंगे हम जरूर इस चीज को फॉलो करेंगे कि वो कैसे करता है और आपकी टीम उस पर कैसे काम करती है संजय भाई खादा मैं आपसे नया अगला सवाल करूंगा जब परफॉर्मेंस की बात आती है so uh, what i observed was masana even being a stallion while practicing and performing he was so focused that he was not even getting um, you know diverted by the thoroughbred mares or warm blood mares which were working with him in the same arena which is a very big thing that we uh, it's very easy but it just takes some time that we have to work on their temperament once we achieve that we can train them very easy. and 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 even after uh, being the only marwadi stallion uh, in his very first dressage he was fourth among all the participants which is a very big thing and he was ridden by the 10 12 year old kid that's a very good thing and that's why i'm saying you know masana apart from being an athlete himself he is a specimen he is he's an example uh, for all the other desi horses uh, that are coming through the same kind of i mean uh, kudos to the team of handlers and team of trainers of mastana we have at least kind of come to an understanding that these horses with the right training with the right handling can have the right mindset developed as well and that a mindset which is a performance mindset rather than you know kind of a, a destructive uh, mindset so uh, obviously you know uh, all your points taken and we really look forward for mastana to putting more and more examples and more and more horses like mastana i mean ek ghoda hai ek ghoda is cheez ko kar raha hai uh, aim hamara ye hai ki zyada se zyada ghode jo hai wo is line mein aaye aur ek ek samay aisa hona chahiye jahan pe chahe uh, jaise imtia sir bol rahe the chahe wo desi ghoda ho ya koi uh, thoroughbred ho ya koi kisi bhi breed ka ghoda ho perform sab ek level pe kar rahe hain ek stage pe kar rahe hain kabhi koi jeet raha hai kabhi koi jeet raha hai but at least ek stage mila ghode ko तो दैट इज इम्पोर्टेंट आई थिंक फ्रॉम दैट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू मस्ताना का केस स्टडी जो है वो अपने आप में एक लॉन्ग ड्रॉन केस स्टडी रहेगा खुद आई के लिए और उसके टीम के लिए और आई थिंक पूरे फर्टिनिटी के लिए सो आई कम नेक्स्ट संजय भाई खादा आपके पास मैं आऊंगा नेक्स्ट जहाँ परफॉर्मेंस की बात हो रही है अभी हमने मस्ताना का बात किया आपकी जो घोड़ी है आपके उसके बारे में आप कुछ बताइए उस उसके ऊपर आपने जो पार्टिसिपेशन किया है या आप लोगों को साथ में जो अचीवमेंट हासिल हुई है उसके बारे में बताइए क्योंकि आपकी घोड़ी जो है वो इंड्योरेंस में एक एस्टेब्लिश काठियावाड़ी घोड़ी है जिसको आई थिंक ना सिर्फ गुजरात बट इंड्योरेंस जानने वाले जो बाकी uh, इंडिया में है वो भी जानना चाहेंगे वो भी फॉलो करते हैं तो आप कुछ बताइए उसके बारे में और आप उसके साथ में क्या ट्रेनिंग करते हैं आपका रूटीन क्या है और आपको आगे किस चीज की जरूरत है डेवलप करने के लिए उसके बारे में भी हमको थोड़ा सा बताइए आप क्या सोचते हैं अभी मेरे पास पहला तो कोई वो आइडिया नहीं था कि में जाएंगे पहले तो सिर्फ ट्रायल राइड ही करते थे लेकिन जब से 2019 में एक बार इवेंट हुई अहमदाबाद तो वहां मेरे फ्रेंड हितू भाई खासर गए थे अपनी घोड़ी लेकर तो विदाउट प्रैक्टिस उन्होंने एंडियोरेंस को पहले स्थान पर कर लिया मतलब वो जीत गए तो उससे इंस्पायर हो के मैंने भी सोचा कि हम भी जाए तो हमारे लिए कोई प्रैक्टिस तो नहीं थी तब लेकिन फिर भी इंस्पायर के साथ चले गए घोड़ी लेकर तो तो उसी से गाइड धीरे-धीरे। फिर मैंने 2019 में दिसंबर में 
पार्ट लिया और 40 किलोमीटर से पास आ गए तो तब मैंने वहां पर तो रूल्स तब मुझे मत पता नहीं था लेकिन तब सीखा हमने एंड्योरेंस के ज्वाइन करने के बाद सीखा कि उसके क्या क्या रूल्स होते हैं कि ये एड्रेस हमने होना चाहिए घोड़ा हार्ट रेट चेक करते हैं ट्रॉट करवाते हैं वो सब वहां से सीख लिया हमने फिर 60 किलोमीटर में गए मार्च में तो मार्च में हम सब 60 किलोमीटर में गए तब पूरी तैयारी करके गए तो तब पता चला कि हमारे घोड़े में काफी क्षमता है तब जानने मिला कि इसमें तो बहुत ही ज्यादा क्षमता है एंड्योरेंस उसके फिर ऑल इंडिया ओपन चैंपियनशिप कोई 2021 में वो थी 80 किलोमीटर से 80 किलोमीटर अहमदाबाद वहां भी हमने पार्ट लिया और वहां पर भी फर्स्ट आ गए तो इससे पता चलता है कि हमारे देसी घोड़ों को अगर प्रॉपर ट्रेनिंग दी जाए तो वो क्या कुछ नहीं कर सकते और सब घोड़े का अलग अलग टेम्परामेंट होता है मतलब जो वो सर ने बताया उस तरह के घोड़ा किस काम का है जो जिस काम का है उस पर उसके ऊपर एक फोकस करे और उसके बाद फिर अभी लास्ट मे मंथ में गर्मी की सीजन में एंडियोरेंस हुई थी हमारे गुजरात सरकार द्वारा स्टेट लेवल की खेल मार्ग तो उसमें पार्ट लिया तो फोर्टी किलोमीटर में वहां पर भी हम फर्स्ट आ गए और एक हमारे गुजरात सरकार के द्वारा आयोजित रिपब्लिक डे पर एक इवेंट हुई थी उसमें बड़ी बेरल में पार्ट लिया था तो वो तो कोई बड़ी बेरल में तो कोई प्रैक्टिस नहीं गेल में जाकर अपने जो दूसरे रेडर थे उसको पिकअप करना होता तो उसमें भी हम फर्स्ट आ गए ये पांच अचीवमेंट में हम फर्स्ट फैंटेस्टिक संजय भाई आई लुक फॉरवर्ड मैं कब आपके यहाँ पे आऊंगा और आपको और आपके घोड़े को भी मिलूंगा और राइड भी करूंगा तो मेरा सौभाग्य होगा बट खुश रू सर एंड इम्पिया सर आई मीन इफ यू हर्ट दैट फ्रॉम संजय भाई खादा ही इज फ्रॉम गुजरात ही इज फ्रॉम अ स्मॉल प्लेस ओवर देर एंड हिज जर्नी ऑफ यू नो कमिंग इन टू इंडियोर एंड स्पोर्ट आई मीन एज यू हर्ट इट वॉज मोर through exploration to self exploration that he came to know about the event learned about the event and then perf- performed in the event and also kind of uh, as as an outcome won the medals and prizes but these kind of riders who come from far flung areas i mean this is one example where the inquisitive mind of sanjay bhai led him to explore something and the surprising not the surprising but the interesting thing is he learned about the sport while participating in the sport right but there's a lots of there's lots of talent out there uh, i mean base talent or kind of uh, you know raw material out there that never get that kind of an exposure even to think about uh, something like uh, you know participating in in an endurance event because you know from from this story is like by the way kind of a thing that one horse and one rider came into forefront how do we uh, kind of uh, incorporate uh, uh, an idea or uh, a kind of uh, i would say a program to actually tell people about what are the kind of events that they can do with the horses in their backyards and you know get these people into the mainstream what what can be done what can we do because these can people I, don't can have I... access to the to, to to the to the clubs or the sport or even the thought because they have not been exposed to any uh, any of these things they have the they are there the horses are there in the background tied but nothing happened can i talk about sanjay bhai for 2 minutes because i have ridden with him yes. i have yes, seen sir, him in sir. two events and uh, in one of the events in 60 kilometers where he came for he was riding with my batch only where i was doing 80 kilometers sanjay bhai अगर आपको याद है तो ऐसा है कि एक सचिन तेंदुलकर होता है एक धीरू भाई अंबानी होता है और एक संजय भाई और मानिक का पैर होता है आई 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 रियली आई रियली इनका जो पैर है मानिक और जो संजय भाई का जो पैर है जो इनकी मानिक की भी साइज और लाइटनेस और संजय भाई की साइज और लाइटनेस और इनका जो बेसिक राइडिंग स्किल है ये इनके जैसे आदमी लोग को अगर इंडिया पुश कर सकते अगर इनका टेम्परमेंट ऑफ एंडियोरेंस टेम्परमेंट ऑफ जो समझना है अगर इनके जैसे राइडर लोग को कोई बड़ा ग्रुप पुश कर सकते तो ये इंटरनेशनली अपने लिए कुछ कर सकते हैं दीज आर ये राइडर ऐसे हैं जो दे आर बॉन्ड राइडर्स यू डो इनको सिखाना नहीं पड़ता है अपने को अपने को सीखना पड़ता है अपने को छह महीना पहले से 
अगर छह महीना पहले से हम कसरत करें तो हम साठ किलोमीटर अस्सी किलोमीटर खत्म कर सकते देर आर सम नेचुरल राइडर्स जो रात को भी उठा के आप बिठा दो तो वो दे कैन डू गुड एंडस दे टेम्परमेंट इज गुड इनका टेम्परमेंट गुड है तो एक्सपोजर ही है एक्सपीरियंस ही है और और ज्यादा अगर एक इंस्टीट्यूशन इन जैसे ये है एक सामिया करके लड़की है दो तीन दो तीन जो यंग टैलेंट है अभी हम तो 59 नाइन ईयर्स के हैं लेकिन जो तो दो तीन यंग टैलेंट है वो टैलेंट को कोई ग्रुप पुश करे तो ये इंटरनेशनल लेवल पे भी अपने को रिजल्ट लाके दे सकते हैं उनका वो टेम्परमेंट है उनका वो बॉडी लैंग्वेज है वो मैं बोलना चाहूंगा इनको एक्सपोजर ही चाहिए इनको इनको एक्सपोजर चाहिए कि वर्ल्ड में क्या हो रहा है अपन क्या कर सकते हैं हाउ वी कैन रीच देर अमरेला ये जो आपने अमरेला बनाया एसोसिएशन का इसमें से ही ऐसे लड़के लोग उभर के आ सकते हैं वो मेरा बोलना है एनी वे दैट्स फॉर मानिक एंड संजय भाई देर देर आर एक्सेप्शनल पेर मेड फॉर इच अदर दैट्स अ वेरी गुड फीडबैक सर फॉर संजय भाई एंड मानिक एंड आई थिंक इस पेर को हमको हाईलाइट करना चाहिए कैसे स्टेज पे ताकि इनसे इनसे for lack of a better word my hindi my english word bhul gaya i'm having that aap uh, english bolo hum hindi bolenge so don't worry you say in english <laughs> like uh, in in inke inke example ko humko logo ke samne isliye lekar aana ki inse prabhavit hoke baaki log kam se kam soch sake aur ho sakta hai ki ek dusra sanjay bhai ek dusra manak in the next few years jo hai i mean many sanjay bhai and many manaks jo hai wo taiyar ho sake ho i mean they are all in the background mere main aapko aisa main aapko aisa vouch kar sakta hu सॉरी मैं आपको ये वाउच कर सकता हूँ कि पांच बच्चे लोग हैं मानेक है वो एक साइमा करके एक एक सूरत से भी लड़की आई थी एक दो महाराष्ट्र में दीज आर ये ये 25 26 साल के जो बच्चे लोग हैं उनको अगर आज से काम करेंगे उनको अगर आज से करेक्ट दिशा मिलेगी तो 10 12 साल के बाद इंटरनेशनली हम अपने बच्चे लोग को और घोड़े को कुछ करा सकेंगे ये कल होने वाली बात नहीं है ये आज से माटे जितना इम्पोर्टेंट घोड़ा है जितना जितना इम्पोर्टेंट घोड़ा और उसका माइंड है उतना इम्पोर्टेंट राइडर और राइडर का माइंड भी है सो so, ये बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट देर आर फोर ऑफ आई वेरी 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 गुड यंग चिल्ड्रन जिनका माइंड एंडस में देखो एंडस में कामनेस भी चाहिए एंडस में स्टेबिलिटी भी चाहिए कभी मैं मैं खुद गर्म हो जाता हूँ I am I am not a endurance human being. But in in log's body language is so beautiful. In log ko internationally push kar sakte. Ten, twelve years mein they can represent on a indigenous horse. These people can represent us. He, you, 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 मानिक का जब हम बात करते हैं तो नहीं नहीं कोई बात नहीं सर दिस इज इम्पोर्टेंट दिस इज वाई वी आर ऑल मानिक का जब हम बात करते हैं शी इज मोर एंड मोर काठियावाड़ी पिक्चर्स एंड वीडियो इज अनिरुद्ध सिंह अनिरुद्ध सिंह मैं आपसे ये सवाल करूंगा सबसे पहले तो यू 80% of your posts are like you must own a kathiawadi once in your lifetime the question is why why yes. will kathiawadi be a gem for an owner and why should that once in a lifetime thing be associated with kathiawadi what are your feelings yeah. around why do you say that dekhe uh, <clears throat> first of all thank you uh, ye aapne ye sab आयोजन अच्छा किया कि सब लोग एक दूसरे से इंटरेक्ट कर सके और इस मुद्दे पे स्पोर्ट्स के लिए और अपने देसी घोड़ों के लिए बातचीत कर सके और स्पेसिफिकली आपने काठियावाड़ी घोड़े के लिए पूछा है तो मैं अहमदाबाद में रहता हूँ जहाँ देखिए मैं गुजरात से बिलोंग करता हूँ और गुजरात के अंदर सबसे हमारी एक खुशनसीबी है कि मारवाड़ी ब्रीड भी गुजरात में बनासकाठा एरिया में ओरिजिन मिलता है उसका और सिंधी ब्रीड हमारे कच्छ में मिलती है और सौराष्ट्र एरिया में काठियावाड़ी ब्रीड भी मिलती है तो हम हमारे पास सब हॉर्सेस का स्रोत है और काठियावाड़ी ब्रीड हमारे एरिया में जहां पर मैं अहमदाबाद में रहता हूँ वहां पर ज्यादातर मारवाड़ी रहते हैं और काठियावाड़ी ब्रीड के बारे में बहुत सारी मिसअंडरस्टैंडिंग्स है तो अभी कैसा होता है कि किसी ने आपको कुछ बताया और आपने उनकी बात मान ली 
ये बहुत सारी ऐसी बातें होती रहती है तो जब तब आप खुद एक घोड़ा खरीदते हो और खुद आप उसके साथ टाइम स्पेंड करते हो तब तक आपको उस घोड़े के या उस ब्रीड के बारे में ज्यादा पता नहीं चलेगा मैं आपको ऐसा भी बताऊंगा कि एज अ राइडर आप कहीं पे राइडिंग क्लब में जाके राइड करते हो उसका भी डिफरेंट रहेगा और आप खुद का घोड़ा परचेस करके खुद आप उसके ऊपर राइड करते हो और उसको संभालते हो उसका भी एक डिफरेंट एक्सपीरियंस रहता है तो उस हिसाब से मुझे ज्यादातर लोग ऐसे ही बोलते क्या ये काठियावाड़ी घोड़ों में आप ले रहे हो ये हाइट कम होती है ये रहता है कि ये काठियावाड़ी टट्टू के पीछे क्यों पड़े हो पर मैं बेसिकली एक एज अ राइडर में राइडिंग सीखा हूँ माउंटेड पुलिस में गुजरात में एक अच्छी सुविधा है कि माउंटेड पुलिस में आप एज ए सिविलियन राइडिंग सीख सकते हो तो मैं उधर से राइडिंग सीखा हूँ तो एक जैसे इम्तियाज सर ने बताया कि एक घोड़ा घोड़ा होता है ऐसे ब्रीड तो हम लोगों ने उसको ये ये घोड़ा है ये ब्रीड है वो अलग अलग किया हुआ है तो जैसे अपने पास व्यवस्था होती है एक हर एक राइडर को फ्यूचर में इच्छा होती है कि मैं आगे जाके खेलू ये टेन पैकिंग स्पोर्ट्स है बहुत ही अच्छा स्पोर्ट्स है देखिए हम अगर स्पोर्ट्स की भी बात करते हैं तो हमारे इंडिजीनियस हॉर्सेस टेन पैकिंग स्पोर्ट्स में भी बहुत अच्छा परफॉर्म कर सकते हैं एंड्यूरेंस स्पोर्ट्स में अच्छा परफॉर्म कर सकते हैं और ये जंपिंग और दूसरे स्पोर्ट्स से इसके अंदर टाइम कम देना पड़ता है घोड़ों के लिए और सबसे बेसिक समस्या हमारी ये है कि हमारे पास इवेंट्स नहीं होती है रेगुलर एक प्लेटफॉर्म ही नहीं मिलता देखिए जब पालनपुर में एंड्यूरेंस हुई तब जाके संजय भाई को एक प्लेटफॉर्म मिला अगर वही एंड्यूरेंस अगर शायद राजस्थान में होती और उधर जगह होती तो शायद उनका माइंड भी होता कि यार इतने दूर कौन जाए कौन नहीं जाए तो लोकल इवेंट्स जितनी ज्यादा हो वो सबसे जरूरी बात है और हमने धीरे धीरे लोगों को ऐसे लोग जो जैसे आप, आपने हम सबको मैसेज करके और इस प्लेटफॉर्म पे इकट्ठा किया कि चलो इस बात पे बात करते मेन एक एक चीज ऐसी होती है कि जो बात को समझ सके क्योंकि घोड़ों के अंदर जैसे सिद्धार्थ बना ने बोला कि जो अभी जो चल रहा है नाइन्टी परसेंट लोग ऐसे ही है कि चलो हमको जो घोड़ा लेना है शो में नंबर लेना है बस एटी नाइनटी जो घोड़ा लेने की सोच रहे है वो वैसे ही लोग सोच रहे है और जो राइडिंग करते है वो जो राइडिंग करते हैं उनके पास ऐसा प्लेटफॉर्म नहीं है चलो अभी हम मान ले अहमदाबाद के अंदर बहुत सारे फार्म्स है घोड़े वाले लोग ऐसे कि जिनके पास 20-20 घोड़े हैं 10-10 घोड़े तो अगर अपना एक घोड़ा भी कोई ऐसे राइडर को आगे लाने के लिए और उनके फार्म का उनका घोड़ा भी एक ऐसे आगे बढ़ेगा कि चलो स्पोर्ट्स के लिए एक घोड़ा भी डेडिकेट करते तो हमारे पास अगली इवेंट के लिए अगर सपोज एंड्यूरेंस एक, एक बहुत ही आसानी से होने वाला स्पोर्ट्स है कि कोई भी कर सकता है एक लेवल के बाद उसके अंदर भी आपको बहुत सारा एफर्ट्स डालना पड़ता है पर पहले 20 किलोमीटर करना है तो कोई भी आसानी से उसके अंदर पार्ट ले सकता है कि उसके लिए ऐसा नहीं है कि आपको इतनी सारी ट्रेनिंग करनी पड़ेगी नॉर्मल ट्रेल राइड करते हैं वो लोग भी पार्ट ले सकते हैं तो धीरे धीरे जैसे इवेंट्स और प्लेटफॉर्म ही नहीं मिल रहा है इवेंट्स ही नहीं हो रही है और शो की अगर बात करें तो शो के अंदर लोग बहुत सारा खर्चा भी करते हैं और एक साइड अपने स्पोर्ट्स के अंदर उतना इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर भी डेवलप नहीं होता और उतना खर्चा भी लोग करना नहीं चाहते तो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के बारे में आप क्या बोलेंगे व्हाट शुड बी द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर क्या इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर का डेवलपमेंट uh, होना जरूरी है क्या मिसिंग है बेसिकली देखिये मिसिंग मिसिंग तो देखिये इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के लिए जो कोई एक खड़ा होना चाहिए जैसे इन, 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 इम्तिया सर ने बोला कि मेरे पास है बीच आप आ जाओ करो ऐसे लोग कम हैं जिनके पास कुछ है वो भी उस तरीके से देते नहीं और हर राज्य के अंदर दो चार जगह ऐसी होनी चाहिए जहां पर सीखने को मिले अभी आज किसी को सीखना है जंपिंग सीखना है एज एम गुजरात में हूं मैं अभी की बात कर रहा हूँ तो गुजरात के अंदर कोई ऐसी जगह नहीं कि आप जाके प्रोफेशनल जंपिंग सीख सकते हो दो चार प्राइवेट क्लब है वो भी अच्छे करते हैं लोग पर उनका खुद का गोल होता है और अलग तरीके से चलता रहता है पर वो ज्यादा लाइमलाइट में नहीं है एक तरीके से इंडिजिनियस हॉर्सेस या कोई भी हॉर्स का इक्वाइन स्पोर्ट्स अपने लाइमलाइट में नहीं है अभी लाइमलाइट में सबके पास ये घोड़ों का शो का ही बिजनेस है जो भी आप देख लीजिए तो इसको लाइम में लाने के लिए क्या करना चाहिए अभी अभी हमने जैसे सारंग खेड़ा का हमारे वहां ऐसा हुआ था कि चलो उसमें तो दो लाख रुपए इनाम है शो के अंदर इनाम रखते हैं तो उस हिसाब से लोग जो नहीं जा रहे थे वो भी 
दस लोग ज्यादा उसमें जाएंगे कि चलो इना में अगर शायद अपना होता है तो और स्पोर्ट्स के लिए चलिए आज स्कूल में पढ़ने वाले बच्चे अभी ज्यादातर जो स्पोर्ट्स कर रहे हैं वो खुद अच्छे बैकग्राउंड से आते हैं जिनको पैसों का उतना दिक्कत नहीं होती है वो खुद जाते हैं अपने घोड़े लेके सबसे पहला ये स्पोर्ट्स के अंदर क्या दिक्कत है अगर कोई जगह पर इवेंट है तो आपको भी जाना है आपको घोड़े को भी उधर जाना है तो उसके लिए उसके पीछे खर्चा लगता है तो उस सब चीज को मैनेज करने के कैसे मैनेज करे एक ऐसा ग्रुप हो कि जो जैसे खुचरु भाई ने बोला कि संजय भाई है उनकी पैर सही में बहुत बढ़िया पैर है और वो जो चलते आप उनके साथ राइडिंग में हो अगर एंड्यूरेंस में मेरा भी वही राइड में मैं भी था 2019 में 40 किलोमीटर में तो उनको देख के आपको अच्छा लगेगा और जो तरीके से संजय भाई घोड़ी को राइड करते थे और उन्होंने जो किया है फिर भी उनका एक अनफॉर्चुनेट मैं मानूंगा कि लास्ट ईयर या उससे पहले जब कोरोना के बाद कोई भी 80 किलोमीटर की एंडस नहीं हुई अगर वो हो जाती तो उनका एक 40, एक 60 और दो 80 हो जाता तो वो वन स्टार के लिए क्वालिफाई हो सकते थे और ये पैसे उनको फॉरेन में भी अगर अपने घोड़ा लेकर खेलना है दूसरे हायर करके तो भी खेल सकते पर वो क्वालिफाई हो नहीं हो पाए क्योंकि इवेंट ही नहीं हुई तो ऐसी सब चीजों उसमें भी कुछ दो साल का वक्त होता है कि उतने टाइम में आपको ये करना रहता है और इन सब की जानकारी भी ज्यादातर लोगों को नहीं है कि ये होता है ये होता है और ई का तो जैसे बताए वो एक ठीक है कि जब होता है वो तब करना चाहिए पर पर्सनली मैं भी यही सोचता हूँ कि जितना क्लब कंपटीशन अगर अगर हो, अगर होता है कि एक स्टेट के अंदर चार पांच अलग अलग एक्टिव क्लब है तो इंटर क्लब कॉम्पिटिशन भी हो सकता है साल में एक बार एक बार सपोज इनके वहां हो गया दूसरी बार इनके वहां हो गया ऐसे भी कर सकते हैं और काठियावाड़ी ब्रीड का तो जिस क्लब में इवेंट हो उस क्लब के घोड़े को यूज किया जाए ताकि एक क्लब से राइडर अगर दूसरे क्लब में जाता है तो फिर दूसरे क्लब के घोड़े यूज जी 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 क्लब का कोई राइडर इस क्लब में आता है तो इसके घोड़े यूज हो इसके डिफरेंट राइडर्स का मिले और राइडर्स को भी एक्सपोजर मिले एक्सपोजर मिल सकता है और ट्रेनिंग का दूसरा जैसे इम्तिया सर ने बताया ट्रेनिंग का बहुत बड़ा इधर है कि ट्रेनर को कोई ज्यादा पैसे देना नहीं चाहता कि कौन हायर करे ट्रेनर को मैंने ऐसा देखा है कि ज्यादातर लोग खुद करते या फिर उनके जो केयर टेकर होते हैं उनसे राइडिंग वगैरह करवाते पर प्रोफेशनल एक क्या होता है कल्चर होना चाहिए कि उसके ट्रेनर हो ग्रूम हो वैसे अलग अलग होगा तो ही ये इंडस्ट्री आगे बढ़ सकती है और इसके अंदर दूसरा एक पहलू ये है कि कोई बच्चा है स्टूडेंट है उसका वो पढ़ रहा है तो उसके माँ बाप भी ये सोचेंगे कि यार ये इसके अंदर इतना खर्चा हो रहा है ये होता है तो उससे आगे जाके इसको मिलेगा क्या इसमें वो भी थोड़ा बहुत होता है तो अभी देखो वैसे राजस्थान में गवर्नमेंट ने स्पोर्ट्स कोटा में अच्छे वो किसको राइडर को भी जॉब मिली है हमारे गुजरात में से एक हमारा दोस्त था वो अपने मुंबई में राइड टू लीव एकेडमी उधर सीखा जंपिंग का उसने एक सेमिनार वगैरह उधर था कैंप था पंद्रह दिन का वो किया उसके बाद कोलकाता में उसने घोड़ा हायर करके उसको सिल्वर मेडल मिला और उस बेस के ऊपर वो आर्मी में भी सिलेक्ट हो गए पर उस चीज की और ये सब जानकारी बहुत कम लोगों को होती है और ज्यादा अवेयरनेस नहीं है लोगों में जैसे काठियावाड़ी के बारे में भी हमारे वहां ऐसा ही है कि लोग ऐसा ही सोचते काठियावाड़ी होता है कि लात मारता है काटता है जैसे निहाल सिंह सर ने बहुत अच्छी बात की कि हम लोग ऐसा समझते है कि ये घोड़े तेज है और दिमाग के ज्यादा वो पर वो चंचल है आप उसको किस तरीके में आप लेते हो उसके ऊपर डिपेंड करता है उसको शांति से हम उसको ज्यादा टाइम देकर ट्रेंड करते तो वो अच्छा काम देता है एक साल उन्होंने बताया कि ट्रॉट और हमने उसके ऊपर ही किया हमारे यहाँ देसी कोई भी ट्रेनर ट्रेनिंग करते तो एक महीने में आपकी घोड़े चालू करके दे देते फिर वो चले जाते और वो जो ओनर होते वो राइड करते जैसे भी करते कभी करते हफ्ते में एक दो बार करते नहीं करते तो ऐसी सब चीजें तो ट्रेनिंग के पीछे टाइम लगता है मैंने सुना है देखे ड्रेसाज के अंदर तो दो साल मिनिमम आपको देने पड़ते हैं घोड़े को क्योंकि मैंने बेसिक मैंने सीखा ही माउंटेड पुलिस से और 2014 में मेरे सौभाग्य से कि गुजरात के अंदर अहमदाबाद में ही 
ऑल इंडिया पुलिस मीट से तो वहां पर मैंने पहली बार ड्रेसाज देखा कि जो घोड़ा अंदर जाता है जो पहली बार जो देख रहा है होता है उसको तो पता ही नहीं ये घंटी बजी यार ये तो दो मिनट में बाहर आ गया और ये अभी तो पूरे चक्कर काट रहा है तो इसमें क्या होता है वही ड्रेसाज क्या है वो भी नहीं मालूम है ज्यादातर लोगों को कि उसके अंदर क्या करना पड़ता है बेजी किए वो तो बहुत सारी बातें अपने कर सकते हैं ये ट्रेनिंग के लिए वो पर सबसे अहम बात है कि इवेंट्स ज्यादा हो अगर एंड्यूरेंस की बात अगर करें तो हमारे वहां भी बहुत सारे अलग अलग लोग अलग बातें करते कि हम कैंप्स करते ये करते पर एंड्यूरेंस दो दिन का ही गेम है अगर आप अच्छे हमने यहाँ पर लास्ट इसी साल जानवरी में राजकोट में पच्चीस किलोमीटर की एंड्यूरेंस की उधर पंद्रह सत्रह लोग ज्वाइन हुए थे पंद्रह राइडर्स थे तो उस टाइम थोड़ा कोरोना का भी थर्ड वेव का चल रहा था तो ज्यादा लोगों को नहीं बुलाया था तो एंड्यूरेंस के लिए अपने कैंप करते कैंप करते पर उससे बेटर है कि अगर जहां पर अपने करना है सपोज हम हमको आपके वहां आना है तो आपके आजू बाजू में आप कांटेक्ट आपके एरिया में हो गए तो उन लोगों से जिनको इंटरेस्ट है वैसे लोगों को बुलाकर कैंप करना चाहिए और सिर्फ कैंप नहीं दूसरे दिन पूरी एंड्यूरेंस ही क्यों नहीं कर सकते हम चार घंटे लगते हैं पांच घंटे लगते हैं जो बीस पच्चीस किलोमीटर के चालीस किलोमीटर मैक्सिमम अगर होती है तो उसमें ज्यादा टाइम तो लगता नहीं और उनको क्या है कि प्रैक्टिकल घोड़े के ऊपर बैठ के करेंगे तो ही उनके दिमाग में ज्यादा बैठेगा ऐसा मेरा सोचना है और ये चालू भी हमने थोड़ा थोड़ा किया है कि दो इवेंट्स ऐसे हमने किए एक अहमदाबाद में किया मार्च में और एक जानवरी में राजकोट में किया तो ऐसा माइक्रो लेवल का आपका नेटवर्क करना चाहिए और जितने भी इसके इंटरेस्टेड और और स्पोर्ट्स को आगे बढ़ने के लिए सपोर्ट में रहते हो वैसे लोगों को साथ में लेंगे तो जल्दी अपना टारगेट अचीव कर सकते हैं हम बिल्कुल आपने बात की प्लेटफॉर्म प्रोवाइड करने की व्हिच इज व्हिच इज वन की थिंग फिर uh, लोकल शोज जैसे कुशो सर ने भी बोला कि लोकल शोज जितने हो उतना ज्यादा इम्पोर्टेंट है राधा देन वेटिंग फॉर ई एफ आई वो दूसरी बात एंड द थर्ड थिंग इज बेसिकली प्रोवाइडिंग मोर एंड मोर एक्सपोजर वो भी होना चाहिए जहां तक वर्कशॉप और वर्कशॉप के तरीके की बात की इट्स गुड टू नो फ्रॉम यू की गुजरात में आपने एक ऐसा वर्कशॉप किया जो पहले ट्रेनिंग था उसके बाद में इवेंट मतलब रेस भी आपने कराया ट्रेनिंग इवेंट uh, हमने भी आई एस एच एल में वो चीज करवाया है एंड द इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग इज की ऐसे जो डिफरेंट uh, जगह पे काम हो रही है आप लोग कर रहे हो या मेरे स्टेबल्स पे हो रही है उनको एक प्लेटफॉर्म पे आके उसको डिस्कस करना और उस चीज को आगे लेके जाना ताकि एक कॉमनलिटी आए और लोग साथ मिल के काम करें दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज एक चीज और देखा गया है स्पेशली वेस्टर्न इंडिया में इट्स वेरी मच ऑफ एन आई एंड ईगो काइंड ऑफ थिंग कि हमने कराया या मैंने करवाया एक से एक शो जो है वो ज्यादा पैसे लगा के अपने आप को अगले साल बड़ा करेगा या एक पर्टिकुलर पर्सनालिटी है जो ये बोलेगा कि भाई मेरी वजह से ये हुआ बट ठीक है वो सब चीज अपनी जगह है आई थिंक वो सब पुरानी बातें हो चुकी है सिद्धार्थ सर विद वॉट एवर संजय भाई एंड अनिरुद्ध सिंह नाव and you being connected to uh, you know uh, a society marwari horse society jo is patronized as you said by uh, his highness uh, jodhpur um i think i think there's a lot of possibilities that can be explored at at your level at your kind of strata uh, to do a good number of development uh, activities uh, is 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 that an appetite in an organization like the marwari horse society do something like uh, like this do something yeah. where yes. you know kind of uh, exposure to sports rather than just breeding yeah. and shows are coming up yes vimal ji um, firstly it was very inspiring to 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 hear um, all our speakers sanjay ji anirudh ji and even nihal singh ji speak um, and they are absolutely right um, about the points that they've made um you know the marwari horse society organizes a show every year it's called the marwar horse show and it happens in the month of february and in the last 3 4 shows uh, at least in the last 3 shows that we've had we have tried to push the equestrian sporting activity a lot so we've had we've had uh, 
dressage exhibitions we've had tent pegging competitions we've had show jumping uh, as well and uh, every year it's growing in our marwad horse show this year the show is on the 17th and 18th of february and uh, i take the uh, this platform to invite all of you horse lovers indigenous horse lovers to to come and join us for that show um a few points um uh, of course all that um, anis has said is uh, is worth its weight in gold when it comes to you know training and uh, basically training is universal and uh, all horses at the end of the day are same temperamentally different and my experience of the marwadi uh, the marwadi i am also anirudh singh ji i am also a proud uh, owner of a kathiawadi i know sir i know i know sir yes yes <laughs> apollo so i very yes. good and uh, yes, yes. i i am very very impressed uh, with the kathiawadi he is a he is a very strong boy um and i look forward to now saddling him and riding him but my experience with the marwadi is that like you have one man dogs um like you have you know other animals that that um attach better with one person rather than too many people handling it our indigenous breeds are like that and i think that goes back down to history where in our old form we encourage the bond between the rider and the horse that was our old method and if you read our history the horses are as famous as the masters i mean you have manana pratap's chetak you have durga das's arbod you have ballu champavat's um, bahadur and you you know every babu ji's kesar kalmi you name a hero and the horse is as famous and he's written down in the annals of history and why is the horse so famous because he went on to do extraordinary deeds on the battlefield and why did he do those why did he accomplish those deeds because he had that incredible bond with the master the master asked him to jump off a fort wall he did the master asked him to get on to an elephant he did and so these horses are immortalized so we had encouraged that bond so my my experience with the indigenous horse especially the marwadi is that they are basically one man horses and they don't take very well to too many people handling and riding it and i have experienced both because i have guests riding in my hotels and there have been incidents where guests have got on to a couple of my mares and they have completely in half an hour of sort of bad riding or not being in sync with the animal the horse has completely gone brain fried uh set me back 6 months to 1 year of training um so so these animals but once they bond with you they bond beautifully and then then that experience too i have had with with alishan my my stallion and then it becomes telepathy at the end of it um so, uh, so, uh, the 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 need of having more of uh, you know these horses these riders coming through the right kind of mindset and right kind of training exactly. and it exactly. requires a lot of effort it requires requires a huge amount of effort absolutely and uh, you know someone like an organizational setup like uh, yours which has influence over not only you know jodhpur but there's like the whole of yeah. rajasthan fan india example. Yeah, these kind of In programs, fact, Pan India, yeah, these kind of programs. I think there has to be a thought process. Obviously, you know, organizations like us and uh, many other organizations would will will, will be doing their uh, thing. But I think the stature, because of the founding phases that you have, and because of the interactions that you can have with, yeah. you know, that stature, there's a lot of possibility yeah. that can be. evaluate yes. and i think that's one of the so, that you should take up with the body yeah a lot has come a lot has come out of these platforms uh, you know where we've had seminars uh, hosted by our society a lot of good has come out of it and as you say now to introduce or to encourage all the owners of indigenous horses to take the next step and get into equitation and equestrian sport and training of their animals would be the next step forward for these animals um and i i think the possibilities are huge because 
आई एग्री नियाल सिंह जी आप ड्रेसाज में ट्रेन कर रहे हैं मारवाड़ी को और वो भी स्टैलियन को मैं भी स्टैलियंस को ही ट्रेन कर रहा हूँ आप कभी पढ़ा रहे हैं इधर तो इट विल बी अ प्लेजर टू राइड विद यू ऑन माय हॉर्सेस बट आई फाइंड स्पेशली इन द मारवाड़ी दैट एट द एंड ऑफ द डे स्पेशली फॉर ड्रेसाज द मारवाड़ी स्टैलियन इज द बेस्ट एज कम्पेयर टू द मेयर और गेल्डिंग वन सी सेटल्स डाउन ही इज अ प्लेजर टू वर्क Um, absolutely, uh, absolutely, and I think when it when it comes to that connection that you're talking about of one horse, one rider, I think the handling of the horse itself, and exactly, all, um, something that's uh, very close to my and heart is my two young daughters who have started riding. They started riding at the age of two and a half. They are females, and I look forward for their future in the Indian equestrian scene, especially right. with our horses. You, the thing But that I think I'll come next to. Yeah. The, the just yes, a minute sir. i'll just finish by saying that with these two breeds that i've had experience with marwari more and the kathiawadi just you know very little but that they, they are just very sensitive animals they need to be handled with a lot of love and if you give them that they will reciprocate tenfold uh, that is my uh, experience with the marwari absolutely and i think i i take that cue and you know i'll <laughs> the next person that i would like to speak about a uh, few things is uh, shoukria uh, shoukria you are a female equestrian uh, of india we have a dearth of female equestrians in india when you talk about handling and when you talk about you know kind of creating that bond i think we have seen in the west and we have seen in most of the places it's the females who are more riders and competing and on, on horses um and uh, something that we don't uh, often see in india you being a female equestrian and you being there out in a male dominated uh, uh, scenario what are your thoughts you know why do we have dearth of female equestrians in india and what should be done to increase the female equestrians because you know some of the fantastic riders and some of the fantastic handlers of horses around the world have been females have been the girl power so what are we missing absolutely you are right about this fact and i agree to your point that uh, there are very less female in india as compared to this uh, like in other countries so according to me uh, the few reasons that i think are uh, responsible for this uh, uh, thing is firstly due to the physical nature of the sport as we can say people find it risky dangerous and people find it uh, uh, you know more chance of injuries and also they don't prefer yeah uh, they they can't imagine female doing such things and they don't prefer females to do such things so this is one of the reason i think that it's just the nature of this sport which uh, which creates a sense of fear in them and the second thing that i find is uh, like people in india do not prefer uh, sports as a career option they don't Uh, see much of the future and they don't see sports as a career option for female they don't prefer uh, it for females so this may be one of the reasons why less of the females are into it and if i talk, uh, talk about tent pegging also the one thing that we lack behind is uh, there is no proper access to the sports uh, like if uh, if one wants to learn tent pegging we we can see very less of the clubs uh, have this facility we have a lack of coaches we have lack of grounds and we have lack of knowledge about this sport which is the reason that people don't opt for this so uh, i think this is the reason that uh, like the lack of access to the sport is the reason why we are lagging behind in this thing and to uh, like to promote or encourage uh, female participation i must suggest first thing is to create awareness because one should know one should get a opportunity and firstly one should get a knowledge that what all ways i have to get into this so it can be done by organizing uh, workshops at affordable prices so that even uh, average person can come and at least learn about the sport and learn about the options he or she can have in the sport 
if he learn now if he chooses to continue or not it's totally upon him but one should have a, a good platform to learn about the opportunities and uh, uh, like uh, for the good uh, for the people who are skillful and talented there should be cash prizes rewards and financial scholarships which gives them a, a, you know uh, encouragement to do better always to improve themselves so this is also one of the thing and one thing i personally feel is we should spread uh, we should stop spreading the word that it's a male dominated thing it's nothing like that it's not at all like that we just spread the word and it creates a mentality in everyone it's it riding is all about the bonding between the love and the bonding between the rider and the horse and using the right technique using the right training so it can be achieved by anyone irrespective of the gender irrespective of the breed whoever gets it get it it's not about any gender or it's not about any breed so we should focus on like a collective uh, a collective effort of creating a good environment and also we should give equal respect to every breed we should give a equal respect to every gender we should not uh, like one should not be uh, uh, like uh, commented on or uh, like demotivated uh, ki you are riding on this breed or you are a female you can't do this a positive environment and a, a positive encouragement uh, from my side like i feel is the most important thing which will uh, attract female riders and which will attract every kind of rider to uh, participate in the sport no absolutely uh, what you're talking about is um, the ideal uh, scenarios and i think it would require massive uh, public mobilization just to change the thought process of people uh, around certain cliches that are there and i think uh, you know every mass mobilization actually starts with that one small stone rolling that gathers momentum and you know gathers everything in the in in, in the process and become big and i think uh, it's like uh, obviously there are other female riders in india and but the percentage is still smaller but it's the, it's with people like you and the examples uh, that you guys set that should be taken out there in the domain for more and more encouragement to more and more you know participants especially uh, you know the, the female participants even for the parents for example to know that you know we thought that this is that the, the sport requires a lot of power but we are seeing that there are like 10 successful female riders over there who are riding on the same kind of horse power and doing it with a kind of ease and with kind of you know the process and with kind of uh, uh, the this abilities the performance of any other rider you know that that message has to come across for each of these cliches to die down i think you guys are doing a fantastic job of of getting them and i i, I did not know uh, you personally or you know in uh, basically on a, on a national stage but i was told by someone in fact viniti that you know there is a girl who does it you know we should invite her we should uh, talk to her and listen to her views and the views that i have listened to from you and i'm i'm sure the panel itself uh, is quite encouraging and congratulations for uh, what you have done and congratulations for setting that example as well i mean all kudos to you and uh, really thank you for providing uh, me this opportunity to speak and especially for indigenous horses and i would uh, like to add a point that i personally prefer indigenous horses like till if i uh, tell about my experience uh, till date i have mostly ridden like 99% i have always participated on indigenous horses and it's just a myth it's totally a myth that they are aggressive it just depends on schooling and like we civilians in tent pegging mostly ride on indigenous horses and we are all okay with it they are just they just need good training and they just need a good temperament you you have to do the uh, do, do that with a perfect uh, i can say a good behavior with them we we need to uh, like teach them with love good horsemanship works on them and then they give excellent results because indigenous horses are absolutely spirited and safe 
and i feel they are always willing to learn they are always ready for the challenges and they are very soft to, to legs and hands so they are very much safe and like very much successful in the field of tent pegging absolutely that that's very encouraging to to hear and uh, i'm sure uh, you know from from a uh, from a uh, taking it forward things kind of a uh, mindset i again would look forward to people like uh, imtiaz sir khushru sir and siddharth sir to get to the platform you know going for more and more uh, female participation and um, that that message out to say that you know this is a sport for everyone and no one is weaker or stronger if one has the ability and has been trained right uh, devanji this is it. this is one this is one sport where men and women compete at the same platform there is no Absolutely. separate event for men and women internationally men and women will compete on the same platform so and i think it is it is just a lack of exposure in our country uh, and uh, you know the as as the young lady just pointed out there is this fear factor amongst parents um, that it's a dangerous sport and girls you know will get hurt and all, all of that uh my next question would be to an equally uh, passionate uh, lady in the panel viniti uh, who has not been riding uh, recently because of a fall and an injury and i really look forward viniti for you to ride uh, again uh, very soon but my question to you would be uh, you know to the panel to the knowledge of the panel i've already introduced it Vinidhi is the secretary of ISHEL and uh, very involved in our project from day one. Vinidhi, what do you think ISHEL brings to the table, and what do you think you, as part of ISHEL, uh, take uh, to uh, the masses outside, and what uh, benefits or what kind of future do we see with uh, people like you and the passion that you have through ISHEL? to uh, contribute to the equestrian uh, scenario viniti yeah am i audible yes yeah we can hear you uh, thank you vimal first of all and uh, i would like to tell you that uh, two years back when sir started training masana right so there were a lot of uh, breeders who came to me and said that uh, you are just wasting your time right just focus on breeding you'll earn money out of it what you'll do uh, you know by by riding him training him for dressage it's not of any use so uh, this is what the mentality majority of the marwadi breeders are carrying with them right they don't understand that uh, by training the horse and riding and everything it makes him physically fit and uh, for the marwadi shows that we have the rings that are happening in that also the presentation of that horse will be very different okay so uh, if i talk about myself being a part of ishl i would like to first of all change the mentality of mass of that people who are out there with that mentality and after doing that i would like to uh, you know provide them that platform on which they can learn more about it and uh, actually can practical uh, practically do it on their horses which will be which will work in both ways like for riding perspective also and for their marwadi shows also absolutely how important do you think is uh, you know kind of education um, education in, in, in like the field, the middle, right? I, yeah, uh, see like uh, i i attended few of your classes right online classes in which you taught us about uh, horses like different different topics so this is something very important for every horse person whoever is owning the horse so uh, you know lectures by providing workshops like we had with imtiaz sir like we had with akriti so by by inviting more and more coaches and by inviting horse owners also with their horses that you can come you can see learn and everything so this is what we can do on our uh, from our part 
absolutely and i think perhaps that's one of the most important things congratulations on passing your exams as well of all our trainings <laughs> to the rest of the panel i would like to uh, say that you know we have instituted uh, equine uh, training and education in ishl we are currently um trying it out with all our ishl members and then you know in, in 2023 we we plan to launch it for uh, public as well so that's what vinti is talking vinti was talking about we spoke about doing events at the club level or the local level obviously that's 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 the way to go uh but they even doesn't they they need some kind of a uh, uh, innovation a thought process which i have seen in you and i'll tell you why because we think that when it comes to the equestrian events we show we we come to you know of show jumping and tent pegging and uh, endurance in a stock standard fashion but i have known you as creator of ideas you know recently you have created an idea I, uh, it, it's yet to be done but you know putting horses together with motorcycle riders as a team and kind of getting into an event uh, you know laying down the rules and regulations for the event so a new innovative thought process to tell people that you know uh, it's it's not only stock standard events but there are other events that can be done in order to train and bring together worth uh, to to the horses and their riders and give them platforms you know what were your ideas behind and what do you think should be ideas of the people who are trying to you know kind of in inverted brackets create events or hold events locally you know what happens when we are doing only a equestrian event only the equestrian people who are concerned they come and the growth of our uh, equestrian uh, growth is only within that piece so there is no growth so we came up with this idea that we should have a joint event between the uh, endure a uh, horse doing 20 kilometers uh, say say we we decided to have which is on right now we didn't get the police permission that time we are yet looking at doing it in february and we are also talking to mahendra to uh, sponsor us so 20 horses 20 motorcycles and 20 four by fours they would form a team Uh, we were yet we were yet contemplating whether we should do lots at the site or whether it is predefined that you me and this guy is a team so that was the idea and uh, the horses would do 20 kilometers on the same track the motorcycles would do 20 kilometers and the uh, j- the 4 by 4 jeep guys would do 20 kilometers and then we take a we ma- we made a system of tallying the uh, three uh, events to uh, three disciplines together <coughs> and we were going to award some trophies year by what happens you know when 20 bike guys come and when 20 horse uh, 20 4 by 4 guys come even if two two guys or even two two people from their family join the equestrian uh, arena that is how we will be able to grow the equestrian arena so that is the most important focus what we are trying to do and this year we are trying to go, we will most probably be doing that even another event we had last year in nasik it we called it a epl equestrian premium league where we did a endurance event only of 20 kilometers if people have heard about travis cup travis cup is James one of the cup, most yeah. yeah most difficult endurance arena in the world so we nasik is is hilly nasik has got hills nasik has got stones on the floor nasik is a most difficult track so we said let the let the most so up till now people are saying that's a bad track that's a bad point that's a bad point that's a bad point because they come back to rajasthan they come back to palanpur gujarat and also we decided ke we will take nasik we will take the disadvantage as the most important advantage we'll call it a travis cup we made a track of 22 kilometers and we changed it into a team event so no individual person will win in that it will be a team event you, your four riders my four riders either the team gets this qualifies so whereby we are creating more team awareness otherwise what was happening i am riding i am winning i am losing i don't care for what's happening to you you don't care for what's happening to you so creating more more togetherness between people creating more team awareness like what happened in my team i actually finished the fastest and finished the first but my balance three people got disqualified so i lost my team lost so what happens is you, we start caring for our people we start caring so a, a lot of togetherness is created so that kind of curation we are doing we are, we, we are taking the format of endurance 
but we are creating circles around it to create more awareness to create more happiness within the riding community also this is what we are doing because over the years i saw uh, we did a lot of events in palanpur uh, sanjay was also there uh, anirudh was also there this uh, right now abhi jo apna endurance ka jo time hai अभी भी ये उग रहा है इतना आगे बढ़ा नहीं है जितना ड्रेसाज बढ़ा है जितना जंपिंग बढ़ा है उतने में ये झगड़ा करने का कि मैं पहले आया या तुम पहले आया उससे इंस्टेड ऑफ ग्रोइंग इंस्टेड ऑफ एंड्योरेंस ग्रोइंग वो एंड्योरेंस टूट रहा है जो मेरा कोशिश करता हूं कि टीम इवेंट करो टू दिस इज वॉट एटलीस्ट एंड नेक्स्ट ईयर वी आर इवेंट वी ऑल्सो वी आर डूइंग माउंटेन स्पॉट इन द मंथ ऑफ मे एट एट अरिना विच इज विद द इंडिजिनस ऑसिस एंड इन इन जैन मोस्टली वी आर डूइंग अ क्लब इवेंट फॉर एंड्योरेंस सो वी वी आर डूइंग अ मिक्स वी आर नॉट ओनली सिंग खाली एंड्योरेंस करेंगे वी आर डूइंग मिक्स इवेंट्स Whereby everybody can shine. Abhi endurance mein, main champion ban gaya to, sab log kyu aayenge agli baar? Mix game rangenge, jaha pe koi jita, jaha pe koi jita, jaha pe koi jita. So people want to come. Nahi to har baar yehi aadmi jitta hai, to public uh, loss ho jata hai. Kya ho? Now he's master the actor, wo hi jitra hai. Main kya jaake karu? So hum log alag alag format, alag alag endurance base leke, endurance ki principles leke, alag alag cheez kar rahe, jaha pe alag alag aadmi log jite, alag alag aadmi log ko. दिलासा मिले कि मैं और कुछ कर सकता हूं दैट इज वॉट वी आर डूंग लाइक वी आर ट्राइंग टू क्यूरिएट अ थ्री किलोमीटर वी आर ट्राइंग टू क्यूरिएट अ थ्री किलोमीटर एंड्योर ट्रैक विद सम ऑब्स्टिकल्स तो वहां पे भी आदमी लोग को खुशी मिले वो वो इंपॉर्टेंट है देन वी कैन गो टू इंटरनेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल लेवल it's more of participation it's more of bringing the people together and i think what you spoke about bringing families together means a lot because ye ek aisa sport hai jahan pe rider maidan pe hai aur family ghar pe hai agar families ko involve kiya ja sake to mere khayal se zyada se zyada log encourage honge uh, is sport ke liye uh, which will be fantastic um, to all the uh, panel members i think uh, hamara discussion bahut hi fruitful raha aur hamara ye pehla discussion tha हम कोशिश करेंगे कि और इस तरह के डिस्कशन हम करें और जो भी पॉइंट्स हमारे यहाँ पे डिस्कस हुए हैं उनको कोलेट करके सर्कुलेट करके इस चीज को और नेक्स्ट लेवल पे लेके जाए ताकि अगला डिस्कशन जो हमारा हो वो नेक्स्ट लेवल का हो ना कि वापस से उन्हीं सब चीजों को लेके हम डिस्कस करें तो ऐसा एक एफर्ट रहेगा आई एस इनवाइट करता आप सब लोग सब को एक मतलब मेंबर्स बन के और डे टू डे बेसिस पे कंट्रीब्यूट करने के लिए जो मेंबर्स नहीं भी है आईएसएचएल कोलैबोरेट करने के लिए तत्पर है रेडी है उन सबके साथ में ताकि हम सब मिलके एक एक जुट होके इस चीज को आगे लेके जा सके सिर्फ हमारे घोड़ों के लिए और हमारे प्राइड के लिए हमारे नेशन के Uh, sorry, I, I just got uh, broke up there. तो ऐसा एक है और बचपन में हमेशा दूरदर्शन पे देखा करता था जहाँ पे एक प्रोमो चला करता था टू गेट इंडिया टूगेदर मिले सुर हमारा तुम्हारा तो सुर बने हमारा तो मिले सुर मेरा तुम्हारा तो सुर बने हमारा इस तरीके से था तो सब साथ में मिलकर अगर इस चीज को काम को हम आगे बढ़ाएंगे तो आई एम श्योर आने वाला टाइम आने वाला फ्यूचर जो है हमारे घोड़ों के लिए हमारे राइटर्स के लिए और खुद इंडिया को इक्विस्ट्रियन मैप पे लाने के लिए एक आ, अच्छा एफर्ट रहेगा टू बिफोर आई क्लोज द कॉल मैं सबसे ये पूछना चाहूंगा कि किसी को अगर कुछ बोलना है तो वो क्लोजिंग के 
larger events if if next year if after the year and uh, my coaches will be coming mostly this year in january february uh, they are a couple who are four star international uh, uh, endurance riders and they are they are horsemen since 40 years i feel if we can hold a camp with them a training camp it's not only about endurance it's about correct horsemanship it's about correct training it's about correct feed it's about correct farrying and the correct riding the correct saddle fit i feel if you want to open if you want to have a platform uh, or seminar in january or february i will i will arrange for that that's all that i need to say thank you so much sir that's encouraging uh siddharth sir had to leave um shorya any closing words from you but i uh, really like to thank you for having us together it was very uh, i mean it was a uh, it was very knowledgeful for me to listen to all the dignitaries and i am really thankful and i'm always up for indigenous horses and its welfare so any kind of help from my side i'm always up for there so thank you so much for this opportunity thanks thanks shorya we look forward to have you as member of ishcl um anirudh any closing words from you बस बहुत यही बात है थैंक यू ये आपने एक प्लेटफॉर्म अच्छा किया कि हम हेल्दी डिस्कशन कर सके इस चीज के बारे में और जो आपने बताया वही ये बात घोड़ों से ज्यादा ओनर्स और हम सबको ही अपना एक दूसरे का सुर मिलाना है और इस चीज को एक आगे ले जाना है ऐसे ही हम आगे बढ़ेंगे तो बहुत अच्छी बात है तो दूसरा एक मेरा एक, एक ये भी पॉइंट था पर वैसे अभी देखिए सर ने बताया सिद्धार्थ बना ने जो की मारवाड़ हॉर्स सोसाइटी करती है इवेंट्स uh, uh, जो शो के साथ में होती है तो क्या होता है कि शो वाले जो आते उनमें से कोई ब्रीडर होते हैं उनको भी इच्छा इच्छा होती है कि चलो मेरा एक घोड़ा भी ट्रेन करते हैं वैसे तो उस चीज से जो शोज होते हैं उसके साथ एक दो ऐसे इवेंट्स भी होती है अगर तो भी uh, वो अच्छी बात है uh there should be a, a special category for female so that they get encouraged and i i think that uh, for the beginner level uh, they get encouraged and they find themselves closer to the opportunity so uh, giving them this opportunity would uh, really help sir absolutely in december ishcl is doing a workshop just for uh, female riders uh but we will publish more details around it but that's important not only ishl but i think most of the events organizers should be doing it it's it's, it's a very good uh, suggestion thanks thanks uh, shorya for that nihal sir aap kya bolna chahenge aap se milna pending hai but aap kya bolna chahenge sir main to ek hi baat bolna chahunga is field mein char baatein zaruri hai lagan मेहनत हिम्मत और ताकत ये चार चीज आपके पास में है तो आपको सफलता से रोकने का कोई नहीं ले सकता अब इसमें सर छोटी सी आप जैसे विद्वान ने कहा है कि लगन रूपी कैमरे में हिम्मत की रील डालकर मेहनत का बटन दबाइए सफलता का फोटो सामने वाह <laughs> वाह सर मतलब कोई भी कार्य करने के लिए चार चीजें जरूरी है लगन मेहनत हिम्मत और ताकत ये जो मस्ताना चल रहा है इसी बीच को लेकर चल रहा है मेरे अंदर लगन थी कि मैं मस्ताना को कुछ बना के बताऊंगा और सर बनाया आप लोगों की दया से अच्छा चल रहा है और बढ़िया फर्स्ट क्लास और आगे भी इसको और आगे तक ले जाने की कोशिश करूंगा ये यही मेरी तमन्ना है मस्ताना जो है मस्ताना एक ऐसा घोड़ा है जो इतिहास लिखेगा और आप उसके साथ काम कर रहे हैं तो उसके साथ आप भी इतिहास लिखेंगे सर आपकी पूरी टीम इतिहास लिखेगी सर मस्ताना को देखने के लिए तत्पर है मस्ताना के लिए मेरे ऊपर एक चैलेंज भी था कि ये स्टैलियन है और उसको राइडिंग कराना इस पर बैठना और इसको जब मैंने शुरू में चलाया तो इसकी ये स्थिति थी कि बैठना तो दूर पार्श में जाना मुश्किल होता था और आज आपके सामने दस साल का बच्चा उससे जम्प करा रहा है बस सर मैं तो यही यही मेरा कहना है कि कोई भी हो ये घोड़े गर्म दिमाग के नहीं है इनमें चंचलता है तो इनको प्रेम से लो 
प्रेम से अगर इनको चलाओगे बहुत कुछ करके देंगे बस सर मेरा तो ये कहना मैं और आपके परमिशन अगर होगा तो मस्ताना को राइड भी करना चाहूंगा सर और उस, उसको उसको एक्सपीरियंस करना चाहूंगा खुद और आपका जो काम है वो काम बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट काम है आ, ये सिर्फ बोलने की बात नहीं है ये कर दिखाने की बात है और हम जिस प्रोजेक्ट को लेके चल रहे हैं उसमें आप जैसे लोगों का योगदान जो है वो बहुत जरूरी है और बहुत अहम है जी। तो इसे आ, आपको आगे बढ़ाना है और लोगों को एजुकेट भी करना है ताकि ये और आगे से आगे बढ़ सके और जैसे मैंने कहा आपसे मिलने के लिए आ, बहुत इच्छा है इच्छुक हूँ और डेफिनेटली इंदौर का एक ट्रिप लगेगा मेरा तो आपसे मिलूंगा भी और बैठ के आप काफी सारी बातें करेंगे थैंक यू थैंक यू सर विनती एनी वर्ड फ्रॉम यू एनी क्लोजिंग वर्ड फ्रॉम यू Well, it was one another great session, Vima. So I would just like to thank everyone who came today and and then gave their valuable experiences and inputs. No, thank you, thank you, thank you, Viniti. Thank you for taking your time out and joining us. I see there is Yatharth Dave on the call as well. Yatharth, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you like to say something? No, but ye, aap sab milke mehnat kar rahe ho, to hume endurance race me practice aur ham bhi mehnat karte hai. Aap aapne aisa state diya hai, to ham bhi mehnat karte hai aur ham bhi try karte hai ki kya kya ho pata hai humse. Thank you, thank you, Yatar. All the best. Aapki mehnat ke liye nisar. मैं एक निसर्ग देख रहा हूं यस yes, सर निसर्ग आप कुछ बोलना चाहेंगे नहीं बस सर ये सुन के अच्छा लगा कि सभी लोगों ने फोकस किया कि ज्यादा लोकल इवेंट्स ऑर्गेनाइज करेंगे तो हम जो पूरा साल मेहनत करते हैं तो उसका हमें एंडोरेंस का भी एक्सपीरियंस होगा तो बस यही अच्छा लगा थैंक यू थैंक यू Yes, thank you so much, everyone. I think we can, we have much over time. Yes, yes, yes. और एक बात कहना चाहूँगा कि ये endurance race हमें तो पता नहीं थी यहाँ पे हम जब ये बनास काठा में जब ये पालनपुर में जब हुई तब तो वहाँ पे खुशरु सर ने अनिरुद्ध भैया ने और सब ने हमें बहुत support किया और हमें तब पता चला कि क्या है ये endurance race और कैसे इसमें participate करते और कैसे घोड़ों uh, को तैयार करते हैं और ये भी कुछ है और हमें प्रोवाइड uh, किया गया पर मैं ये समझता हूँ कि ये बनास काठा और ये हमारे एरिए की एक थोड़ा लगा कि स्पॉट में बहुत घोड़े कम है दो बार इंजोरेंस रेस यहाँ पे हुई पर शायद तक मैं ही एक ऐसा राइडर था कि जो विथ पासपोर्ट विथ पासपोर्ट और ई uh, uh, से जो राइडर रजिस्ट्रेशन होता है वैसे में चालीस किलोमीटर में एक ही राइडर था और जो पार्टिसिपेट किया था पर ट्वेंटी किलोमीटर में मतलब कोई प्रॉपर यहाँ पे राइडिंग बहुत राइडर बहुत कम है और आपके आपके ऐसे प्रयास से मैं चाहता हूँ कि इस एरिया में भी अच्छे राइडर हो और इंजोरेंस रेस में हम इस तरह के यहाँ पे भी फार्मर है और अच्छे मारवाड़ी घोड़े है तो पार्टिसिपेट करे थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू खुशरु सर आई मीन there's a lot that we are hearing about your participation but uh, sabko bahut bahut dhanyawad uh, i think to take part in this uh, discussion and uh, is cheez ko hum aage badha ke ek sath leke jayenge but until next time until next discussion thank you so much and aap sab apna din enjoy kijiye have a very wonderful day and we as ishel will take note of all the points that have come out of this discussion and make sure that that becomes part of our program thank you so much thank you so much everyone thank you